Hello again. So today I'm picking up with chapter 29, following the signs. Yesterday, um, I shared with you chapter 28, which was, let me just refresh myself, um, which was titled Getting Help. And I shared with you my transformational breathwork session that I had done as part of my self-healing journey that um, was a very profound um, experience for me that helped me to finally come to this realization and really feel it in the depths of my soul that despite, you know, my wounding from my childhood, that I was a worthy human being that I always was. So as I've said um, a few times, you know, sharing the different excerpts from uh, different chapters of my book, our healing journey is we are we are always a work in progress. We continue to heal on different levels. Sometimes they're really big moments and sometimes, sometimes they're just small moments of deepening the realization of um, how the universe supports us. So I am home, this chapter, I am home from my transformational breathwork session. It took me um, the rest of the day just to stay you know, be calm and not, you know, go on the internet or listen to the TV and just be with what had transpired. So where I'm going to pick up is the next day. I'm feeling very refreshed, very renewed. I'm so glad I did the breathwork session. And I am at this point, I have walked into the kitchen to get a glass of water and I glance at a photo I have, which I know maybe sounds odd, but I have this mentor that I never met. And her name is Tasha Tudor. If you have followed my blog and my work, you know how I adore and love Tasha Tudor. And I have kept a picture of her on my windowsill. Um, she passed away in 2008 at the age of 92, and I would not discover her until after her passing. But she's part of my healing. She is one of my mentors, continues to be, that helps to encourage me to be who I am. So it was serendipity that I discovered Tasha, who had lived in Vermont two months before John and I left for a trip there. Initially, I wanted to learn more about her because she was a children's author and illustrator and had a love for that short-backed and short-legged dog breed, the Corgi. But it was her philosophy on life that I, I'd feel a, kin a kinship with. At the 21st century, as the 21st century became more about consumerism and materialistic gain, Tasha never faltered from living the simple lifestyle she felt at home in. She dressed in wool frocks, a scarf upon her head, and a shawl pinned around her shoulders. She looked straight out of the 1800s. In Take Joy, the documentary, she commented that when she died, she was quite sure she'd be going back to the 1800s when she'd been married to a sea captain. Like Tasha, I want more than anything to not get caught up in life's trappings. I want to live a simpler way of life and began to put this into practice over 10 years ago. The photo of Tasha in my kitchen, along with another picture of her in my writing cottage, are reminders that I too can choose a simpler, simpler life, even if the world outside moves too quickly. My favorite Tashism is one I heard her say in Take Joy, I don't believe in hurry. Some might think she was nuts. <laughs> Most might label, label her as eccentric, but there is something about her that I've always found grounding. It was her conviction of what she believed to be the truth of her life that to this day has often has me often returning to watch the documentary or reread the books written about her, which I have collected. I'd come to realize that while my healing had much to do with letting go of the part of me that felt broken and was wounded, I'd also gotten trapped in what's sometimes referred to as FOMO, the fear of missing out. My 55th birthday was on the horizon and I was having that familiar feeling that I've often heard others talk about, that more of my life was now behind me than ahead. I'd also made projections about what I thought my life should be, mostly because of societal definitions of what the good life is and how the media can wreak havoc on those who aren't living it. So I'm going to stop there because I go on with the chapter to, you know, just explaining more of what that all means to and how I reflect on what I've learned from Tasha and how she continues to be a mentor. Um, 
and how um, also how animals um, have been some of my greatest teachers in life. And so the next chapter that I'm going to share with you is a very potent chapter. Um, it's called Dreams. And as I continue to say, the universe is always supporting us. And it's up to us to dissect that information. And um, this potent um, symbol, our sign from the universe, came to me in a dream. And, um, and how I would connect this was just amazing and that it helped me um, in my healing journey as well. So tomorrow I'll be back with chapter 30, an excerpt from the chapter titled Dreams. I'll see you then.